this Halloween, we were able to bring some normality back into children's lives. Over 400 children and their parents were able to attend this event thanks to you. I like going around and saying hi to people. Just that everyone came out and was able to do this. All the smiles, all the laughter, just the creativity that went into this. All the costumes, all the great feelings and, and the spread of joy. Happy Halloween. Thank you for joining us at Hope Lutheran Church for Worship Online today. No matter when you're watching, where you're watching, we are just glad that you are here. And welcome back. You look nice and tan. Oh, I feel good. I should say aloha because we were in Hawaii for, for 10 days. And I just want to tell you, Waikiki was empty. The <laughs> hotels, every hotel on the beach, if you've ever been there, was closed. You had it all to yourself. We had it to ourselves. It was great. We just relaxed and had fun. Enjoyed the time. Rolled in the sand, went surfing, I'm uh, sure. Well, not quite surfing, but I did roll <laughs> in the sand. It's hard to teach an old dog new tricks. <laughs> well, yes. you came back to a crazy week here in our country with all the yes. election turmoil and what's going on. Yeah, it's I read an article in the LA Times saying that we're in voters purgatory. <laughs> in other words, all of us, it doesn't matter what side you're on, we're in limbo. That's right. Well, my side already won. Yours did? Yeah. Jesus? Jesus Christ. <laughs> it doesn't matter who's sitting in the White House. It matters who's sitting on the throne of God, and that is Jesus Christ. That's, that's who exactly, we're here to worship that's today. That's exactly right. So let's do it. Let's do it. And by the way, before we begin worship, if you'll like and subscribe to our YouTube channel, that's going to help us reach more people with the good news of Jesus Christ. And if there's one thing we need, all of us need today, is comfort and peace. So spread the good news of Jesus with your friends and family by liking and subscribing today. We are gathered today in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Now let us confess our sin in the presence of God, most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all of our sins. As a called and ordained minister in the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare unto you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now please join us in our opening hymn.
my troubled heart He lives all blessings to impart He lives all glory to His name He lives my Savior still the same Oh sweet Enjoy the sentence gives I know that my Redeemer lives He lives all glory to His name He lives my Savior still the same Oh sweet the joy the sentence gives The good news according to the book of Matthew, the 25th chapter, glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept, but at midnight there was a shout, Look, here is the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish, the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came. And those who were ready went in with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later the other bridesmaids came also saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake therefore, for you know one neither the day nor the hour. The good news of our Lord, praise to you, O Christ. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and his only Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. I don't know about you, but I dream a lot. I have a dream that keeps repeating itself. Every time the details are slightly different than they were in the previous versions. But it's a very vivid dream. I always wake up thinking, why can't I get it together? The dream usually revolves around a worship service here at Hope. The bishop is here, vestments on. He's ready to process as the worship service is about to begin. I have on my robe, but I can't find my stole. So I rush around looking everywhere, in every closet on campus, trying to find a stole, any stole, to put on. Then I discover I don't have my worship folder and that my feet are bare, that I'm not even wearing my, my Pastor Derek socks. Yes, there is such a thing as Pastor Derek's face on a pair of socks. Where's my shoes? Where's my socks? The worship starts, the service starts without me. And by the time I find everything, the congregation is singing the closing hymn. That's when I wake up, frustrated and anxious. Subconsciously and psychologically, this is not an uncommon dream, and its source is pretty obvious. It has to do with getting anxious about the possibility of being ill-prepared for a coming event. That's what today's Good News lesson is all about. Jesus' parable of the ten bridesmaids is a story about preparedness. 
In the Israel of Jesus' times, weddings were a really big thing. If you think that the phenomenon of throwing a huge never-ending wedding celebration is a new one, you'd be wrong. In Jesus' day, weddings were a reason to break from the humdrum of everyday village life. It was a time when, when friends and relatives far and wide would, would come to share in the joy of the festivities. And because people were so far, had so far to travel, and travel itself was so difficult, the wedding celebration went on for days, with people coming, staying, and going as they needed. But one of the highlights of the festivities, when the bridegroom came in the night to take his bride from her father's house and carry her back to his house, to their new home, when the bridesmaids came his way, would be lit by the unmarried women, the bridesmaids of the village, who would hold oil lamps for the bridegroom to see where he was going. The story we just heard is one of Jesus' parables. It, it, in it, the bridegroom is Jesus. The wedding feast is the second coming, Jesus' triumphal return to earth, the time when all humankind will be subject to the judgment of Christ. And the bridesmaids are us, you and me, those who will be prepared and those who will not. This parable, the 10 bridesmaids, along with next week's parable of talents and the following week's discussion of separating the sheep from the goats, are all one big piece of teaching from Jesus. He wants the disciples to understand that their part, that part of their vocation, part of their calling is to be ready for the second coming. Part of the message there to take out to the world after Jesus' ascension into heaven is that Christians need to prepare for Jesus' return. These second coming texts appear before us every year at this time as we come to the end of the church year in two more weeks. Sunday, November 29th is the first Sunday in Advent, the start of our new church year. That means Christmas is just weeks away. Ah! So in getting ready for Advent, we talk about preparedness and end times. This story of the bridesmaids tells us a couple of things about being ready. First, we have absolutely no idea when Jesus will return, so constant preparedness is the order of the day. In Matthew 24, Jesus tells the disciples that there will be wars and rumors of wars. There will be floods and famines and all sorts of calamity before his return. Some people today point to, to current events and tell us that the time is near. That may be true, but it's not the reason that Jesus told the disciples what he did. He was not trying to give them secret clues, turning scripture into a, a puzzle that, that the clever can figure out. No, 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 no. It's, exa it's exactly the opposite of that. Jesus is saying of all these things happen and they are necessary, but you cannot tell the time of the second coming any more than you can predict the exact day that the trees will bud. Only God knows the timing. So, so always be ready. The second thing that we take from this story is what happened to the foolish bridesmaids when they discovered that they didn't have enough oil. They asked the other bridesmaids for some of their oil. After all, they were all involved in the same celebration. They were waiting for the return of the, bride, the same bridegroom. They were all members of the, the same village, the same community. So it only made sense that those with enough oil would share with those who had too little. Jesus' hearers must have been thinking about the feeding miracles that they had seen during Jesus' time on earth. They must have been thinking, of course, they will all pull their resources, offer them to God, and then there will be enough. But that's not Jesus' point at all. The oil in this story is not a worldly resource that people need to survive, like bread or fish or water. The oil in this story is the righteousness of the bridesmaids. It is righteousness that Jesus says we need to be prepared with before he comes again. We can be really anxious to see Jesus again. 
We can go to bed as excited as children on Christmas Eve, anticipating his triumphant return. But unless we are prepared as righteous people, we will be sorely disappointed. You see, righteousness is something we cannot pool or borrow. It is not something we can borrow from our parents or friends. It is something we have to have, something we have to have to develop our own, on our own. The 20th century Scottish theologian William Barclay put it this way, this text warns us that there are certain things which cannot be borrowed. The foolish virgins, virgins found it impossible to borrow oil when they discovered they needed it. A person cannot borrow a relationship with God. He or she must possess it. A person cannot borrow character. He or she must be clothed with it. We cannot always be living on spiritual capital which others have amassed. There, there are certain things which we must win or possess for ourselves, for we cannot borrow them from others. That's what righteousness is really about. We can do good works all day long and have a, a horrible relationship with God. And we can have good character traits, honor, truthfulness, generosity, love, and have no relationship with God at all. But those are the exceptions. As we read, St. Paul tells us, works without faith are hollow. And to paraphrase the book of James, show me someone with faith and I'll show you someone who does works. You see, our character and our relationship with God are intertwined. We need both to be whole. And both require work on our part. Throughout his earthly ministry, Jesus preached and taught about repentance, the turning away from the ungodly and turning back toward God. Jesus again reminds the disciples such repentance of this repentance in this parable of the bridesmaids. Be prepared, he says, says always be prepared. So how do we do that? We, you and I, can be consistently, constantly prepared for the return of our Lord by repenting those things we do that separate us from the love of God in Christ. We can be constantly prepared by developing a character of loving, giving service, caring for others before we care for ourselves, by feeding the hungry, giving shelter to the homeless, and giving drink to the thirsty, visiting the sick. In other words, loving our neighbors. And we can have a relationship with God through prayer, worship, and seeking God's will and listening for God's voice. If we put the building of the kingdom of God first in our lives, if we live our lives like we are God's servants every day, not trying to build up ourselves in the eyes of others, but rather giving all that we have to the glory of God's kingdom, we will live lives of readiness, preparedness, and we'll have no reason to fear, no reason to dream of being unable to find our shoes or socks at an important moment because the bridegroom knows if the bridesmaids are ready. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God of justice and love, you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need and awaken us to the needs of others. In the busyness of our lives, help us to always be awake and prepared, for we never know the time of your coming or our own life's end. In Jesus' name, Amen. Now let us sing together our hymn of the day. Rejoice, rejoice,
Wednesday, we have a special day here in America where we celebrate our veterans. And Pastor Carl, you're a veteran. I'm a veteran of the Vietnam War. Yes. Well, I want to thank you for your service. What branch were you in? I was in the Army, and I was proud to be an American in the Army. Well, thank you for your service, serving our country and serving our church. And I want to thank all of those veterans out there in all the armed services uh, for making that sacrifice to serve for our country. So thank you to all of our veterans out there. Should we continue with worship? Yes. Perfect. Well, I want to thank you for being with us. And I want to thank all of those of you who have been contributing financially during this time. Your support is going a long way in helping us grow and reach out with the good news of Jesus Christ, even in the midst of a pandemic. So if you'd like to contribute and partner with our ministry, there are several ways to do so. One, you can mail in a contribution to Hope Lutheran Church at 45900 Portola Avenue in Palm Desert, California, 92260. You can text to give simply by texting 84321. And finally, you can go to hopepd.org. And not only will you find ways to give, but you'll find all of our ministry opportunities and Bible studies throughout the week. So go to hopepd.org today. And finally, as we're coming toward the end of the year, if you're thinking about your will or trust, a lot of people with the uncertainty in politics are talking about those things, you might want to consider leaving something to Hope Lutheran Church to carry on your legacy, a legacy gift, so that we can continue to reach the next generation with the good news of Christ. Christ. So let us continue our worship by confessing our faith found in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again, and he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Longing for Christ's reign to come among us, we pray for the outpouring of God's power on the church, the world, and all who are in need. Holy God, rouse us to deep praise as we gather for worship. Enliven our worship with sincere and heartfelt song. Sustain the work of all church musicians and artists who lead us in praise and prayer. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Holy Creator, surprise and delight us with the beauty of the world you have made. Bless the work of landscapers, architects, and artists whose work invites us into harmonious living with your creation. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Holy Companion, console those who feel lonely or have any type of need. We pray especially for Jackie Flood, Beth and Laura Kruger, Bonnie and Garland Chambers, Bruce Fossey, Melissa Leach, and all those in need. Bring the gift of healing and peace that only you can bring. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Holy God, bless the public servants and governments of the United States, that they may do their work in a spirit of wisdom, charity, and justice. Help them use their authority to serve faithfully and to promote our common life. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Holy Protector, we give you thanks for the men and women who have served and defended our country and the values of freedom and justice we hold so dear. Help us be mindful of the sacrifices they made and the hardships endured by their families and friends so that we never take for granted the privileges they have secured for us. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Holy and immortal one, we pray in thanksgiving for the lives of all who have died. Especially, we give you thanks for the life of Dick Heckman. Be with his family and friends and remind us of the frailty and shortness of our own lives and inspire us to use them for the building up of your kingdom. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, until that day when you gather all creation around your throne, where you will reign forever and ever. Amen. Well, in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. 
Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. As we are gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us praise our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. And now may the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And before we receive the benediction, I want to once again invite you to like and share our YouTube channel so that we can reach more people with the good news of Jesus Christ. And go to hopepd.org. You'll find out about our Bible studies on Tuesday. I've got a Zoom Bible study on John, and we have all sorts of other activities going on there. So go to hopepd.org. Now receive the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and grant to you his everlasting peace. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve our Lord. Thanks be to God.